for so many people to get affected from this. It's, it's insane. This is a defamation case. It's a case about how devastating words can be when they are false and uttered publicly. You poured yourself a, um, a mega pint of red wine, correct? A mega pint? Dr. Kipper told me he sustained an injury on uh, one of his well, fingers. Uh, rejection, here's, hearsay. Wait, you, you asked the question. Oh. oh. Now, you're a lot bigger than Amber, correct? Physically? I wouldn't say that. Okay. Um, the stand, I would sometimes drink whiskey in the mornings too, right? Isn't happy hour anytime? <laughs> said, and I'll read it, I'll quote it, quote, based on the combined results of my interview with Ms. Heard, behavioral observations, psychometric test data, and review of the available records, Ms. Heard, psychological symptoms mm -hmm. of a combined borderline and histrionic personality disorder, BHPD. That's yes. what you wrote in your report as one of your conclusions, correct? And that's a DSM-5 diagnosis. And it did not say that you were diagnosing with a DSM-5 for borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder, did it? That's what it says in different semantics. And you, Mr. Depps also provided you gifts, correct? Money, gift, yes. gifts? Yes, 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 Johnny's giving me gifts, I've given Johnny gifts. G and you've had, she's given you gifts over $8,500, correct? $8,500. Yeah. You give me a lot more than that. Okay. <laughs> and you're loyal to Mr. Depp, right? No one had ever in five decades accused Johnny Depp of being violent with a woman. No one had ever accused Mr. Depp of being violent with a woman. He had been in other long-term relationships. He had children with the incredible body of work and record that Mr. Depp can be proud of. A false allegation can devastate a career and it can devastate a family. And the evidence will show that Ms. Hurd's false allegation significant impact on Mr. Depp's family and his ability to work in the profession he loved. And then you saw, then you went in the house and saw Mr. Depp in the foyer, correct? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Depp had his, Pants, Objection. Pants, didn't he? I think I would remember Relevance. Mr. Depp. So what, what did you do after Ms. Hurd informed you that she had thrown Mr. Depp's personal property off the balcony? Formulated a plan with Norm from the office to use the Find My Phone app. Did you end up finding Mr. Depp's phone? Yes, I did. It's Kid Row. And who had the who had the phone? A Homeless gentlemen. After a new witness testimony, Amber Heard's lawyers seem to be reaching for anything that they can find. People are thinking that they have no case to argue. Today we go over key moments making people think this way. So what actually went down at Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's downtown LA penthouse was back in the spotlight on Tuesday in Johnny Depp's $50 million defamation case against his ex-wife. With Depp, Heard, the jury, and everyone else that packed the Virginia courtroom watching the video monitors. LAPD officer Melissa Sands bluntly said that I did not identify her, Amber Heard, as a victim of domestic under questioning by the defense team, the March 2021 deposition showed the 12-year LAPD vet detailing her experience entering and observing the couple's South Broadway home around 9 p.m. Pacific time on May 21st, 2016. At the conclusion of that short-ish visit, Officer Sands did not file a report, but cited the incident as closed because there was, in her opinion, no crime. Huh? In the pre-recorded video, Sands admitted that neither she nor her partner took any notes or took any photos of the call to the Depp Heard home. Do you want to win any of these items on your screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like, and comment the hidden message. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. She also admitted Heard was red-eyed, crying, red-faced, and not making eye contact when they arrived. While saying she had no idea who the residents were, the LAPD officer said she was impressed by the penthouse and recognized it belonged to someone wealthy. Well, you were right. It's worth noting that in Depp's failed 2020 libel suit against the UK newspaper, The Sun, 
since his testimony was pretty much sidelined for the lack of notes and photos and assumptions about the cause of the state of Heard's face. Crazy. An elevator video of the two officers leaving the penthouse caused some friction between Heard's lawyer and Sands in the 2021 deposition, with the latter denying she told her partner that was crazy. I mean, yeah, both Sands and her trainee partner, Officer Tyler Haddon, gave depositions in Depp and Heard's 2016 divorce proceedings on what they saw and deduced from being on the scene at the then couple's downtown LA residence in May 21st, 2016, in response to a call from an LAPD dispatch. In that July 2016 deposition, about two months after the incident at Depp and Heard's place, Sands said that she interviewed Miss Heard, closely examined her face, and found no marks, swelling, or injury to her face. Six years ago, Sands said that Heard told her she was not, nor was Miss Heard making a complaint against Mr. Depp. Interesting. Hearing this does not work well in Heard's favor at all, for so many reasons. Earlier on Tuesday, the board certified forensic psychologist, Dr. Shannon Curry, told the court as a part of Depp's argument that she considered her to have a borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. Never even heard of the second one. Hired by Depp's legal team after a dinner at the actor's home with them, him and Depp's right-hand man and former attorney, Adam Wald. Curry made her diagnosis in bulk on a 12-hour session with the actress late last year. She said that she provided her with a test that gave out 567 statements, which she had to answer true or false. Curry went on to say that others with similar scores as her showed traits such as externalization of blame, inner anger, and hostility. Hostility! <laughs> she told the court that those with borderline disorder can react violently, they can react aggressively, sounding familiar, and oftentimes it will be abusive to their partners in these situations. Hmm. Go on. She also said that they can use what she called administrative violence or making threats that they will use the legal system such as filing for a restraining order by claiming them. In cross-examination after Tuesday's lunch break, Amber Heard's lawyer, Elaine Breedhoft, took Curry to task for her perceived closeness to the Depp camp and coincidence of her diagnosis exactly matching the taunts that Johnny Depp directed at Amber Heard, as was played for the court in the audio recordings yesterday. With Breedhoft reading from psychologist's deposition of earlier this year, Curry also confirmed that she has never concluded or arrived at an opinion that Amber Heard exhibits patterns of behavior that suggests her allegations against Mr. Depp are false. Designation documents submitted by the Depp team suggested otherwise, as the defense lawyer took no small pleasure in pointing it out. The three to four hour long dinner and meeting that Curry had at Depp's house before being retained was repeatedly a topic under cross-examination. Specifically how highly irregular taking such a meeting in such a setting and the gathering itself not being revealed in any documents in relation to Curry's expert role in the plaintiff's case. Clearly with time spent in the minutia and reference to other doctors' notes, Breedhoff was trying on this ninth day of the much delayed trial to show bias in Curry's testimony, with Curry remaining relatively composed in the spotlight. Whether or not Breedhoff succeeded making that point of bias to the jury is hard to tell right now, but certainly the frequently brought up idea of one party being gaslit by the other brought a wrinkle to the argument to say the least. Curry actually noted that it's rare for men to accuse women of abusing them when they are in fact the perpetrator. Bro, exactly this. Also, the POV that a relationship characterized by over four years, as Heard claims was the case with Depp, can lead not only to trauma, but symptoms similar to the disorders that Dr. Curry labeled the actress with, okay? Calling Dr. Curry's opinion predictable and lazy. Chartered psychologist Dr. Jessica Taylor reached out to Deadline to say that the borderline personality disorder label has been used knowingly and deliberately and weaponized against Amber Heard, just as it is amongst the many women testifying against their male ABs in court. But to be clear, while Curry may not be recognized and her methods in getting contracted by Depp may be irregular, that doesn't mean that her diagnosis was wrong or that the methods she used in her deductions were unfair or unethical. That is, as in all things in this case, for the jury to decide. Before Dr. Curry's testimony on Tuesday, the court heard via video from Tara Roberts, who manages Depp's Bahama Islands estate. Roberts spoke of an exchange between Depp and Heard, where Amber was telling him he was a washed up actor going to die a fat, lonely old man. <laughs> Yo, what? Johnny Depp is the most handsome man alive. Next, denying she's ever seen Depp blotto drunk 
Roberts did testify under cross-examination that in 2013, the actor was passed out on the beach. I mean, we've all done that once in our lives, it's fine. The incident was so worrying though that the staffer arranged for Heard and Depp's two near teen children to leave the island fairly soon afterwards. But they're grown. I'm sure they were fine. But while that hardly is the most damaging of things, it's part of a narrative that Amber Heard's lawyers have been trying to weave in their own cross-examinations. Of course. What else does she have, you know? Mainly that Depp was an addiction riddled person that would lash out at Amber Heard merely for trying to help him. Okay, sure girl, sure. Depp has also said that he isn't that bad when it comes to his alcohol. Yet, being passed out on a beach and on the island that you own is something that's hard to ignore. But it wasn't just Tuesday's new information that helped put a spin on things in terms of what happened with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. On Monday, the court heard from Ben King, the manager of the house in Australia where Depp and Heard had the fight in 2015. Yo, how rich do I need to be to have a house manager though? This man's got two that he just mentioned. He probably got more than that. Anyway, King said that Heard was crying hysterically when he arrived at the house. Depp's personal doctor, David Kipper, was rummaging through a trash bin, their words. Looking for the fingertip, that's a crazy line. King went downstairs in the bar and game room to look for the fingertip. He said, walking down into the bar, I could see the damage. A broken ping pong table, lots of broken glass, cans thrown around the bar area. Directly at the end of the bar, there was a scrunched up piece of kitchen paper with lots of the fingertip was within that scrunched up piece of paper on the tiled floor by one of the bar stools. I gathered it up in the kitchen area, walked back up to the kitchen and got a little plastic bag, put the fingertip in there, set it on top of some ice and handed it over to David Kipper and Jerry Judge who were keen to get it to the hospital quickly to see if it could be reattached. What kind of horror movie story? King said that he flew back to Los Angeles with Heard where she admitted the following to him. Have you ever been so angry with someone you just lost it with them? King said that Heard became incredulous when he said no and they didn't really speak after that until they landed. Not exactly the positive story you'd want to be told about you, you know? And this no doubt will raise questions about Heard's actions that led as well as why she acted that way to Ben King during that conversation. That sketchy conversation. Johnny Depp's private nurse, Debbie Lloyd. Now her deposition was also played for the court during a previous session, and she had some interesting insights into the relationship between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard as well. Arguments between the couple were an emotional trigger for Depp. I mean, clearly. And Lloyd called their relationship toxic. Lloyd told the court she witnessed Heard instigate fights with Depp on multiple occasions, y'all. She recalled on several occasions, Depp tried to escape arguments and Heard following him from room to room. Clingy, crazy, I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. Lloyd said Depp told her he felt like he was in a no-win situation with Heard who described his behavior as mania. Depp apparently hired a nurse to help him with his stress during this time, but it didn't work. In her notes, Lloyd also wrote about being called to the couple during a fight in the garage. I mean, just hitting every room at this point in the house, you know? She said Depp had security drive him to another house when the argument became heated. She wrote, Depp later agreed to return, accompanied by security. But Depp was also aggressive during the arguments. Lloyd said, I saw Johnny push over one of Amber's clothing racks. Ooh, but said she didn't see any violence directed at Heard. So what does this prove? As you can see, we focused on how Amber Heard has come off in these trial testimonies and with the evidence that was presented. And believe us when we say there was more we could have talked about, including a certain audio recording that confirms definitively that she was abusive in a physical way to Johnny Depp. So how does this help prove Johnny was right? Well, at the very least, it helps prove that Johnny wasn't lying about how Amber treated him in their marriage. Amber has tried to maintain that she wasn't at all to him, but all these statements and recollections prove otherwise. Now, do these prove that Johnny didn't hurt Amber in return? I mean, I guess it doesn't. Or at the very least, not fully proves them. I'll say that. That's why the next steps in this case are just as important as the previous ones because a full picture still needs to be painted. But there you guys have it, a look at the latest with Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Do you think that these statements are actually gonna work in Johnny's favor? What other potential tricks do you think that Amber has up her sleeve? Or do we finally see our boy Johnny flourish? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys next time on the channel.